The BT series fast tank, although not a main force in World War II, is still an important part of tank development history as it is a series that has greatly developed the Christie suspension. The tank's ability to run faster with its tracks broken has been a topic of great interest for many military enthusiasts. However, today we have to pour cold water on many military enthusiasts because when the tracks of the BT series tank are broken, it mostly just means battle damage, and surviving is already good, so don't expect to run even faster. Before World War II, the dual-use tank with wheels and tracks was once considered an important branch of tank development. However, switching between the two modes was a big hassle, and most of them used a hydraulic lifting rubber wheel method, but the BT series used a new mode. The BT series uses a structure of four pairs of hanging rubber load-bearing wheels, with the rear two pairs arranged more compactly, the drive wheels are rear-mounted, and there are no trailing wheels. When driving in track mode, just like a conventional tank, the driver adjusts the speed difference on both sides of the track to complete the steering. However, switching to the tire driving mode is a bit more troublesome. Contrary to the belief of some military enthusiasts that braking the tracks will make the tank run faster, track driving and tire driving are completely different. Even if both tracks are broken at the same time, it is impossible to immediately switch the driving mode. To understand this issue, you need to analyze the tank's internal structure. When the fast tank is in tire mode, there are two transmission modes. One is a chain structure, similar to the transmission of a bicycle, which transfers power from the drive wheel to the fourth load-bearing wheel through a chain to achieve power transmission. The other mode is the same process of power transmission, but with a gear structure instead of a chain structure. In other words, when the tank chooses to move in tire mode, under normal circumstances, the crew needs to remove the track plates and fix them on both sides of the vehicle, then connect the power channel between the drive wheel and the fourth load-bearing wheel, before the mode conversion can be completed. During wartime, if one track is destroyed, the crew must risk their lives to remove the other track and complete the power connection in order to allow the tank to operate normally, but this process has already cost the crew members their lives several times over. Although the gear structure that came later is more convenient and quick, in actual combat, the likelihood of both tracks being broken at the same time is small enough to be negligible. A more likely scenario is that the tracks, load-bearing wheels, and other structures are all damaged. Many old photos from World War II show cases of load-bearing wheels being blown crooked or blown off, which basically means the BT series tank has lost its mobility. When switching to tire mode, the tank's steering method also changes. The original method of differential speed steering is no longer applicable, and the driver needs to install a steering wheel and control the movement of the first load-bearing wheel to achieve turning. Under normal circumstances, it takes about half an hour to switch the tank from track mode to tire mode, and the effort required to switch back is even greater. It completely relies on manpower to flatten the tracks, drive the tank onto them, and then connect the tracks, which takes even more time. The dual-use structure can be said to be a product of the constraints of tank technology at the time. Tanks were unable to meet the needs of high-speed and off-road driving at the same time, so the concept of a dual-use tank was born, allowing for self-switching according to different driving requirements, much like some private cars can switch between high-speed and low-speed driving modes. The problem is that the BT series driving mode structure is complex and takes up too much space inside the vehicle. If it is only used on a 10-ton light tank, it can be acceptable, but it is difficult to ensure reliability when used on a medium or heavy tank. Especially with the rapid advancement of tank technology during World War II, tanks were already able to balance the element of maneuverability. Later medium tanks were generally able to achieve speeds of 50 to 60 km per hour, so at this point, installing a dual-use structure is simply unnecessary, given the structural cost. As one of the few dual-use tanks used on a large scale, the BT series, although it has this cool ability, did not prove to be helpful in the several battles it participated in. Even long-distance marching and transfer did not usually take place, and the joke about it running even faster with a broken track, 
is only good for entertainment in movies and TV shows. In reality, as long as the opponent can break the track plate, they can easily penetrate the thin armor of the BT tank, and as long as they don't see the BT tank smoking or on fire, they won't hesitate to fire another armor-piercing round, wasting no opportunity.